Harvard Business School professor John Cotter argues that knowing what not to do is just as important as knowing what to do when it comes to achieving successful organizational change. Managers commonly make predictable errors when they lead change. The first two errors occur during the unfreezing phase when managers try to get the people affected by change to believe that change is really needed. The first and potentially most serious error is not establishing a great enough sense of urgency. In fact, Cotter estimates that more than half of all change efforts fail because the people affected are not convinced that the change is necessary. People will feel a greater sense of urgency if a leader in the company makes a public, candid assessment of the company's problems and weaknesses. The second mistake that occurs in the unfreezing process is not creating a powerful enough coalition. Change often starts with one or two people, but change has to be supported by a critical and growing group of people to build enough momentum to change an entire department, division, or company. The next four errors that managers make occur during the change process, when a change intervention is used to try to get workers and managers to change their behavior and work practices. Lacking a vision for change is a significant error at this point. A vision for change makes clear where a company or department is headed and why the change is occurring. Change efforts that lack vision tend to be confused, chaotic, and contradictory. By contrast, change efforts guided by visions are clear, are easy to understand, and can be effectively explained in five minutes or less. Undercommunicating the vision is another mistake in the change process. Successful communication of the vision requires that top managers link everything the company does to the new vision so that they walk the talk by behaving in ways consistent with the vision. Furthermore, even companies that begin change with a clear vision sometimes make the mistake of not removing obstacles to that new vision. They leave formidable barriers to change in place by failing to redesign jobs, pay plans, and technology to support the new way of doing things. Another error in the change phase is not systematically planning for and creating short-term wins. Most people don't have the discipline and patience to wait two years to see if a new change of effort works. Change is threatening and uncomfortable, so people need to see an immediate payoff if they're to continue to support it. Cotter recommends that managers create short-term wins by actively picking people and projects that are likely to work extremely well and early in the change process. The last two errors that managers make occur during the refreezing phase, when attempts are made to support and reinforce changes so that they stick. Declaring victory too soon is a tempting mistake in the refreezing phase. Managers typically declare victory right after the first large-scale success in the change process. Declaring success too early has the same effect as draining the gasoline out of a car. It stops change efforts dead in its tracks. When success is declared, supporters of the change process stop pushing to make change happen. After all, why push when success has been achieved? The last mistake that managers make is not anchoring changes in the corporation's culture. An organizational culture is the key set of values, beliefs, and attitudes shared by organization members that determine the accepted way of doing things in the company. Changing cultures is extremely difficult and slow. According to Cotter, two things help anchor changes in a corporation's culture. The first is directly showing people that changes have actually improved performance. The second is to make sure that the people who get promoted fit the culture. If they don't, it's a clear sign that the changes were only temporary.